Notice is hereby giving of a friend given of a Friendswood City Council regular meeting to be held at 6.30 p.m. on Monday, November 18th, 2019 at Friendswood City Hall Council Chambers regarding the items of business according to the agenda listed below. Okay, Deacon Paul Robinson is going to give us our uh, invocation and then following him, uh, remain standing for Gia and Nicole. They're going to lead us in the pledges. and others, thank you so much for this invitation to pray. So we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord God, you have called us to assemble this day to do the works of this city. We thank you so much for these council members who give of their time and energy and efforts untiringly to serve the people of Friendswood. We ask that you pour out your blessings upon them. You give them wisdom beyond their years. You abide with them and keep them safe in all things, as we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, one visible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Okay, item four, communication from the public. To comply with provisions of the Open Meetings Act, the City Council may not deliberate on items discussed under this agenda item. The Council may refer this item to the City Manager or direct this item to be placed on the next regular Council agenda. PowerPoint presentations are not conducted during the citizen comment period. Out of respect for those speaking during public comment, please refrain from any outbursts or interjections to include but not limited to applause and or disparaging noises from the audience. Doing so discourages others from voicing their thoughts and, and opinions and disrupts the meeting. Furthermore, oh, <laughs> this is my first time reading this. Furthermore, okay, it, it goes on. This is new. Furthermore, any personnel complaints against a city employee, aside from the city manager, city secretary, city attorney, or municipal judge cannot be discussed under this section. Please contact the city manager's office for concerns involving a city employee. Connie Radisso. Hello, thank you for uh, having us here tonight. Um, I wanted to ask City Council again if they would put on the agenda um, the item of a citizen's uh, bond advisory or oversight. Um, committee for the bonds that were passed. Um, there's um, quite a few school districts that have these. They're not anything new. There's several cities, Denton, Winston-Salem, Tucson, San Antonio, San Francisco, Brookhaven, Georgia. There's also county um, citizens bond oversights committees. Um, Bear County's one of them. And like I said, many, many school districts have them. Uh, they're used as a mechanism to ensure efficiency, equity, timeliness, accountability, um, also um, transparency, public support, and confidence. And I think that's very important for uh, us to have. Um, some of the committees had five, seven, or nine members, um, but I, I really would like you to consider to suggest that as a menu, as an agenda item. Thank you. Bill Radisso. Good evening, Mayor, Council. I uh, I would here. I'd like to thank the citizens of Friendswood for coming out and voting, and the numbers that they did, and speaking overwhelmingly for uh, drainage improvements, so that we can help alleviate flooding. And I know it's going to take a long time, but I'd also like to thank the Harris County members of the City of Friendswood for getting out showing up in large numbers to vote 
and I think a lot of that had to do with the, the flooding and the effect on them. But I'd also like that, uh, as my wife said, she, that, but to build on that, to uh, create a uh, standing committee on uh, drainage, uh, to work with the, uh, the new city engineer that will be leading up the drainage, or as, as she's called other places, or they, this position is called the drainage czar, but to work with that to provide citizen improvement on things that going, going forward because we know we don't want that concrete ditch. We want it to look something that the citizens will appreciate. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Uh, Gail. Gail Lovely, for the record. First name basis, I've spoken too many times, sorry. 813 days since Harvey. And I'm really pleased that Prop F was passed by the citizens of Friendswood. The ball's now in your court. And you've heard from my um, new friends um, that we need a committee. And I ask you to form a committee that's like those that the library has and the senior program has, standing committees that will stand beyond your tenure, maybe beyond our lifetime. This is a big long-term project, and we need to have consistency across um, the effort. And I think that having a committee on top of what you all will be doing would be quite helpful. I think that it's important to start that right away, not to wait for some other study or some other partner or something else, but to start that process right away. I know some of you followed social media during the bond effort and know that there were some, some citizens who were concerned about oversight and transparency. And I think having a committee, a standing committee with agendas and minutes may be helpful in that, to that end. But don't wait. Citizens count on you to keep it moving. We want it to be focused and a top priority, not the last thing done. So in 813 days, how much farther along this process will we be? I think that's a good marker to remember. That we, there's lots that can be done starting right away, but let's get a group together so it rides on all of us to get it done. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Gail. Dave Yelovic. Hi there, good evening. Um, I'm Dave Yelovic. I live over on Whittier Oaks, and I wanted to start off first by thanking all council. It's the season of thanks. It's November. We'll be hopefully sitting down to Turkey in a couple of weeks and uh, look back at where we've gone. 813 days. Wow. And uh, we've come a long way. We, we do got a long way to go. Uh, one thing I'd like you all to think about in talking to folks in my neighborhood, why didn't you raise your house? How can you raise your house? It's a tough deal to do unless you've got money and it's just short. Uh, what can the city do? Think about perhaps some sort of tax um, thing that we could cut away for five or ten years for people that do raise their houses. Uh, that would help in the long run. Our goal is to get as many houses raised along the creeks as possible. That's one way we could do it. Uh, there's some things in flood insurance that could help with raising houses, but it's not enough to do it. And I could tell you firsthand it costs more than just simply flood insurance to raise a house eight to ten feet. So think about that in the future. Also, uh, AT&T, I think, has a, uh, some sort of agreement with the city. Uh, it's been 813 days since all the pedestal covers floated away in Wedgwood Village. I have tried for two years to get them to replace those. There's wires all over the front yards. And they say, oh, I don't care. Run them over with your lawnmower. We don't need them. But they're ugly, and they own them. They told me I cannot call in a complaint because I'm not an AT&T subscriber. So I appeal to you if they have a franchise agreement with the city, make them fix their stuff. Um, then uh, finally, the, uh, the bonds, the, uh, I'm very, I'm happy that the flood passed, but also the fire stations, that uh, I think we have an opportunity, and I hope when we get into the details, the studies and this and that, look at the dots on the map. Uh, Pearland, League City, if you look at their fire station dots on their map, they're spread out. I don't think it's advisable to have two state-of-the-art facilities in 528 within 1.2 miles of each other. Uh, I personally think that selling that property of Station 2 right now would be great, and purchasing new property for a state-of-the-art Station 2 somewhere else that makes logistical sense is uh, the way we should go. Uh, I support our fire department. I think uh, response times are uh, number one priority, but having two stations that close really doesn't serve the entire town. 
So wherever that uh, service hole is, I'm sure they could figure out where the hole is, let's put a station there. So thank you all for what you do. Thanks, Dave. Dave. Oh, hey. <laughs> what did I say? No, I, I actually said Dave, but I'm sorry if it came out Steve. You look like a, you look like a Steve, by the way. No, I, I know your name's Dave. I, I, I think I said Dave, but I mumble, I guess. Item 5, ordinance uh, consideration of possible action regarding the following. Ordinance number T2019-45, first and final reading of an ordinance canvassing the returns of the special bond election held on November 5th, 2019. Can I get a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Motion and a second. Murad? Um, real quick, Mayor and Council, you have before you tonight the votes and tallies of last week's bond election. In regard to the election, I did want to make a few comments um, relative to what took place on Election Day. Um, as many of you know, we've had record crowds show up on Tuesday, November 5th to vote, and uh, City Hall was overwhelmed, both from an operational standpoint as well as from a life safety standpoint. Uh, I, I took an ADA complaint from an, a resident that was unable to navigate the, the barricades that were established. We had another citizen faint as she made her way up the stairs. Uh, she did not want to take the elevator, and unfortunately, she got overheated when she was upstairs. I asked Council if you're willing to consider future elections relocating them to another facility that is either all on the first floor for ease of accessibility concerns, as well as possibly a facility that doesn't have issues with regard to operational impacts. Um, I know that Councilmember Rocky had reached out to the school district, and they had offered potentially their, their boardroom at the old junior high as a possible location. Um, I don't need a decision this evening. I just see if that's an, of interest to council um, before we move forward on future elections. Steve. Yeah, actually, I'd like to make two comments if I could. Uh, one regarding the point uh, Mo made, a friend of mine who has back uh, has had back problems and has difficulty standing and can't climb stairs was here on uh, election day. And... Uh, so he went to the elevator to go upstairs and just sit and wait his turn, and he was told by the Galveston County election officials that he couldn't use the elevator because he didn't have a walker or a wheelchair, even though the guy is, 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 is obviously uh, disabled. And so he went back and tried to stand in line, and after about five minutes it was too painful, and he went home and didn't, and didn't vote. So I think, one, I've asked Melinda to ask the county why they did that, but I think... I think uh, the upstairs is a problem and, and using these and if we can find it and I did run into Ralph uh, Rob check the other day and, and told him we talked about this and I said you know if we could use the old junior high and he said yeah their boardroom is very big it's ADA compliant it's got a big parking lot after it and he didn't think there would be a reason that we couldn't and so uh, now he's just one guy so we'll have to have it but I would invite Mo to start those discussions um, the second thing I wanted to, uh, uh, as regards to the results uh, I was really pleased about the process. Uh, you know, John Scott, who isn't here, uh, made a comment early on that uh, bonds are are the best form of democracy there is. You put them out, you divide them up, you let people decide which ones they want. And we had a, an amazing discernment across the bonds uh, of, you know, one bond that passed by 67% and another one that failed by almost the same amount. So people were very discerning on what they wanted to spend their money on. That's exactly why we put them out as other ones. And uh, while some people certainly are not happy that one, this, that, or the other one didn't pass, the citizens have spoken on what they want to spend their money on and not. And, of course, I spent a lot of time in the, over the last year on, on drainage, and I was very, very pleased to see that one pass. But I did want to say that I thought, in terms of process and the way people selected which ones they liked and which one doesn't, I think it was awesome. Thanks. I, I agree with you. Uh, you know, we, we passed 50% of the bond propositions, but we passed 70% of the, the money that we asked to borrow, you know, asked the citizens to allow us to borrow. So, you know, I think we did pretty well, and, and we, uh, we certainly got the, uh, the most important propositions, I think, passed. And, you know, the ones that, that didn't pass, we can, we can work on other, other means. We, we can, uh, you know, we can piecemeal sidewalks. Uh, 
you know, that we were going to put two million dollars in the bonds towards sidewalks. We can we can piece part sidewalks uh, where needed out of our general fund. I think we can scrape it up um, and some other things. And I I, I asked uh, Greg Bonin to uh, to help us with the uh, road extension up up to Pearland, and he said he would take that to the state and lead the charge for us there, which in my mind is the right way, probably the way to do that because as an evacuation route, that should be a state or a county road. It, it shouldn't be on the backs of our voters to pay for, you know, we were gonna essentially fund a third of it and we'll still probably have to help the state with, with uh, rights away and things like that. But uh, anyway, I think that's, that's, a, that's a good way. So we have some other options, you know, and uh, I understand that the voters, you know, this is a great way to do it. Let the voters decide from this Chinese menu which things they want and which things they don't think we need right now. And, and uh, I'm very happy with, with, with the turnout. It was impressive. Um, I will go along with Mo and, and Steve and say I would like to move the voting out of City Hall. Um, you know, the only reason I think we vote in City Hall is because we always have voted in City Hall. And it's just, uh, you know, uh, it, it really uh, handcuffs this building for two weeks. You know, we, we can't use at least one conference room for two weeks because they, they set up their equipment in there. Then on election day, they come in and you can't even turn around in, in this building uh, for the lines of people that wait until election day to, to stand in here for hours and, and vote. Um, so I would much rather look for a, a place outside of this building. And uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll hear about it when we first start doing it. But uh, people will re realize if we do it at the old junior high, there's plenty of parking over there. They don't have to drive around and drive around looking for a parking spot. They don't have to climb stairs. They, they can walk right in. I'm sure it will go about as quick, but uh, yeah, that's, that's the way it is. So I think that's all I got on that. Brent or Robert? All right. All in favor? Five nothing. Let's see here. Moving on. Communications from mayor and council members. Anybody? Well, uh, I'll just uh, sort of echo what I what I started to say there, and and thank say thank you to all the citizens that came out and voted. It was an impressive turnout. We were uh, walking around city hall during early voting and seeing the, the the slow trickle of people come in and and vote. We thought, wow. We, we might only have 1,200 people come out for this whole with this whole vote, you know, and and that's the way it was looking. And then, uh, how many people do we have election day, Melinda? Do you know? I mean, we had a lot. We had a we had a whole lot. We ended up with close to 4,000 people came out and voted, 3,900 or something. Question was more rhetorical, probably. So uh, we had a lot of people come out, and um, so. Uh, Thankful to all the people that came out and uh, and voted, and uh, that's that's like Steve said, that's democracy in action. So on on election day, sixteen hundred people. Wow. Yeah. Ken, I, I think we ought to also thank all the citizens that helped on this. That's we had exactly a lot right. of people yes. that helped on the cat team, and then helped uh, during the election process. Some of them are in the room, uh, and I think that's. Uh, you know, a testament uh, to to, uh, to to kind of say we are. We had a lot of people to help, and a lot of our citizens had good opinions one direction or another. But it was great. So yeah, well, I, I I'll piggyback on that too. I, we you know we said a long time ago we could have the seven of us could have said this is what we're going to vote on. This is the propositions we're going to put on the ballot, and uh, we know better than the citizens. Well, that's not true. We don't know better than the citizens, and we. Those cat teams showed us, you know, that there were things that we probably hadn't even thought of that that, that ended up on the ballot, and had it, we had an opportunity to, to vote on. So, yes, I, I think that cat team was uh, made a huge difference in in how we approach this whole thing. And yeah, thank you to all of them. Um, a lot of work went into that. Sixteen hundred here in City Hall, about five hundred and twenty or so um, were Harris County, so about 
that a lot of people vote. All right. Having said that, we'll adjourn. <laughs>